Cheers, mate. Now, let's uh, go live to Treasurer Josh Frydenberg, who joins me from Melbourne. Treasurer, thanks very much for your time. How much is this going to cost, this Sydney intervention? Well, we're expecting the cash flow boost to equate to about half a billion dollars a week. Now, that is a cost that will be split 50-50 uh, with the New South Wales government. On top of that, we've got our commitment uh, to provide the disaster payment, which is a payment that's been elevated to $600 a week and $375 a week, depending on how many hours a week have been lost. Already over 130,000 people from New South Wales have applied for that payment. I expect uh, that number to increase, but we recognise that this is a very difficult and trying time for the people of New South Wales and indeed for the country as a whole. More than five million of our so fellow Australians. So, have you got a ballpark number subject to lockdown. for the, the total spend? Well, again, it's based on a expected weekly spend because we don't know how long this extended lockdown will go for. Our payments will come in in week four, that is next week, and we're expecting the cash flow boost, which is the signature payment from the announcements today, to cost the Commonwealth around $250 million. And given that it's a 50-50 split with New South Wales, that particular program is expected to cost over or around a half a billion dollars a week. To receive that payment, entities, uh, companies will have to be keeping their staff their staffing level as of the mm. 13th of July today. And if they don't, is there any mechanism by which to get the money back? Well, again, the compliance and the, the penalties are to be implemented and worked through by the New South Wales government. Uh, as you know, we had penalties with the JobKeeper program that would apply to, to businesses um, that didn't... Uh, uh, participate appropriately or legally uh, in receiving those payments. Uh, and we are very keen to ensure um, the integrity of these measures. It will be implemented, though, as you heard in the press conferences, by Services New South Wales. They'll, they've got an incentive to put in place the appropriate penalties, but at the same time, employers have got an incentive, Kieran, to keep on their staff because uh, they are expecting and hoping that this lockdown uh, is, uh, mm. is not protracted for weeks on end, that it can be contained and that they can get back to their normal business, uh, business ways. But and there needs to be some where they'll need oversight, doesn't there, to ensure the, the link between mm. a business and the employee is not broken? Well, again, there are two different payments and I think it's important to understand how they work in tandem. There's the cash flow boost, which is designed to provide working capital to businesses to enable them to meet their fixed costs, which are incurred regardless uh, of, uh, of whether they've got customers coming through the door, rent expenses, uh, maybe their payments to the banks, as well as utilities uh, costs and the like. And then there's also the income support, which is a separate payment, the disaster payment at that higher rate now of $600 and $375. Um, but with this commitment from the businesses to keep their headcount as of today, the headcount is as of today, um, then that will be a requirement to participate in the program. And uh, we expect uh, businesses will comply with that. Now, the Premier and, and the government obviously dealing with this ongoing lockdown. We hope it ends in a few weeks. Did she wait too long to announce the lockdown in the first place? Well, I think Gladys Berejiklian has been magnificent through uh, the COVID pandemic. Um, this is a, a very difficult lockdown right now, but uh, if you compare the performance of New South Wales to, to other states, they have avoided to this point in time, the significant lockdowns we've seen elsewhere. And they've had outbreaks like they did on in, uh, on the, uh, the northern beaches and, and they responded uh, effectively. So this is a new Delta strain, which is more dangerous, more contagious, um, more difficult to contain. And, and I've got great confidence in the health authorities in New South Wales that they will, they will do what is required, including this lockdown, uh, to ensure that uh, the state gets on top of it. And, you know, you what's were, really important... You were very critical, though, from the of the Andrews government. You were very critical of the Andrews government throughout that lockdown. What do you say to people who would mm. 
I point out to you, Treasurer, that the, the unvaccinated air crew driver, the, the limousine driver, um, was able to be in that position without a mask, unvaccinated, under the public health orders in New South Wales. Why aren't you as critical of them? Well, when the rules aren't adhered to, I am critical, regardless of which state it's in. But it's chalk and cheese what happened in New South Wales with what happened in Victoria. Tragically, more than 800 people lost their lives in Victoria. 90% of the deaths that we've seen across the country have been in Victoria. And as you know, they stem from a uh, hotel quarantine failure, uh, which the state government um, undertook a review. Um, and the review found that no one seemed to take a decision uh, and no one seemed to take responsibility for that failure, even though a couple of senior public servants lost their jobs and, and, a, and a Victorian health minister. But no one took responsibility for those, for those failed decisions. So I, I don't think you can compare uh, what has been the experience in New South Wales to what has been the experience in Victoria. And I do point out to you um, that Victoria has gone through more than 150 days of lockdown, Kieran, over the course of last year and then this year, which uh, pales into comparison with what has been the experience in other states, including in New South Wales. Can I get, just clarify a couple of points for businesses and, and owners watching? We sure. heard from Craig Laundy, also a restaurant owner in Sydney, worried about the way you're going to look at the, the payroll, because at the moment so many of their businesses mm. have, sent, have sent workers home that if you judge it on the current cycle, the payroll is zero. Can you give us clarity on how this is going to operate? Well, that payroll is over the 2021 financial year. Uh, so if they've made some decisions in the last... A week or two, um, then that obviously has to be seen in the context of the financial year of 2021. So I think that's that's really important. So that should give that that clarity um, to to those businesses. They will be eligible uh, for this payment. Um, this payment uh, will uh, have a minimum of $1,500 and a maximum of $10,000 per week, uh, and it is um, set at an amount which is the equivalent to an average of around 40% uh, percent of a business's payroll. We expect around 500,000 businesses and sole traders to be eligible, uh, representing at least 3 million workers uh, across New South Wales. Um, so that's a very um, substantial number of businesses and sole traders um, that could apply uh, for these particular programs. Obviously, they have to show that their turnover is down uh, by 30% or more as a result of these lockdowns. So there's a turnover test for eligibility. There's a payment uh, that is determined based on the size of the payroll. And, and there's a minimum and a maximum payment. And this is using a system not too dissimilar to what we did through the height of the pandemic with the cash flow boost. But the key point, sure. Kieran, is you have a support payment for business and you have a income support payment for households. The two of those are being strongly backed by the Morrison government. Mm. And those two programs now form a template that we can roll out in other states or territories if they find themselves in this very difficult position that New South Wales has found themselves in with an extended and protracted lockdown. And for non-employing businesses, sole traders, uh, you, you, you yes. alluded to them there, the payment is going to be set at $1,000 per week. Correct, correct. That is correct. Okay. Now, and now, in terms of the, the broader, can you know that aim of JobKeeper was to keep the connection between a worker mm -hmm. and their employer. Does this, if we we touched on it earlier, but are you worried that this design doesn't achieve that outcome as neatly as JobKeeper did? Well, the first thing to say is I think we're dealing with an economy that is at a different stage than. It was when we introduced JobKeeper. I mean, you remember when we introduced JobKeeper, you had uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of people lining up outside Centrelink around the country. You had fear that gripped the community. Uh, and there was a lot of uncertainty about uh, what was being faced by the national economy. JobKeeper did its job. 
Originally it was in for six months. We extended it out to 12 months. We brought in a different, um, a different tier, a second tier. We also tapered the payment uh, and it worked very effectively. And then it came to an end. And since it's come to an end, the unemployment rate, uh, much to the disappointment of our political opponents, has actually fallen. Uh, more jobs have been created okay. since JobKeeper came to an end. So that was the right, that was the right program at the right time. We've now transitioned, Kieran, to a different phase of our response. We're dealing with a localised outbreak in one state and therefore okay. we have um, worked with the New South Wales government in good partnership with them to provide these two, uh, two payments to households and to businesses. Now, when you fixed uh, that Facebook issue, you spoke to Mark Zuckerberg quite a bit on the phone. You don't have any problem <laughs> speaking to global business chiefs. So I presume if you were Prime Minister, you would have called the Pfizer global boss to sort out some more vaccines. Is that fair to say? Oh, that, look, that's a very cheeky question, Kieran. Um, as you know, um, the Prime Minister has worked very diligently with uh, Greg Hunt, the Health Minister. Indeed, the whole government has been focused on securing um, the vaccines, um, delivering them across the country. The good news is more than 9.3 million jabs have been delivered. Uh, more than a third of the eligible population over 16 have received a dose and those more vulnerable cohorts like the over 70s have seen more than 70% of people receive a dose and the over 50... We could have got more sooner than uh, 50% we? have received a dose. Well, we, we adopted a portfolio approach and, as you know, we focused on the domestic production of AstraZeneca and that there was issues with that particular vaccine that we couldn't foresee and uh, indeed that was experienced by other countries. We took the medical advice, namely from Atagi, as to the cohorts that it would apply to and we've also since that time secured more Pfizer vaccine. But as you know, I recently sat down with General Fruin and uh, the business community. We are getting more of uh, okay. those mRNA vaccines, those Pfizer vaccines, and we are partnering with the business community to, to ensure it gets rolled out as quickly as possible. And, and uh, just in a, in a word, would you have phoned the global boss if you were PM? <laughs> oh, well, again, I think the Prime Minister um, has done everything possible to get as many okay. vaccines uh, to, the, to, to, to Australia as, as quickly as we can. Treasurer Frydenberg, thanks very much for your time. After the break, a huge...